Hello and welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, we have just a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. That's strivescan.com slash Minnesota. I now like to turn it over to our first presenter, University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Excellent. Thank you, Jenny. And thank you to all of you for being here on this beautiful Thursday evening. I appreciate you taking the time to join us. My name is Laura Saavedra Myers. I'm one of the freshman admission counselors at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I'm going to do a very quick overview of the university, then talk briefly about our application and review process. So when I talk about the U, I like to talk about it in terms of four key fit factors. I also like to throw in size as a fifth one because I think that's also really important. The U is a big place with about 30,000 undergraduate students. For some students, this large size is a selling point where for other students, that number can be a bit daunting, intimidating, or just a straight up question mark. Um, so I like to throw out there the idea that it's easier to make a big school feel small than a small school feel big. Just something to keep in mind as you think about the U. The first official key fit factor I'd like to talk about is academics. We have eight undergraduate colleges ranging in size from about 13,000 students to about 450 students. So when you apply, you'll designate two of these colleges you're most interested in. Laura, did you have a presentation to pull up? Sorry, I just wanted to, um, we don't oh, see yes. your screen if you, oh. if, just to let you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yes, let's get to sharing. Better, much better. Thank you for that. So you haven't missed much. You missed a welcome slide. Our eight colleges are listed here, also very, very visible on our admissions website. And we're back to academics. Um, so things to know about us, in addition to the wide range of offerings, we have literally thousands of courses available to you as undergraduate students. But we also have classes that are varying in size. 80% of our classes have 50, or stu 50 students or fewer. And for those classes that do have 50 or more students, there's a weekly discussion or lab section that happens as well, capped at 20 students that is led by a TA. We are also a land grant and top tier research university, which means we attract some of the very best and brightest faculty in the world. So you'll be learning from leaders in your field and may very well be working alongside the people who wrote your textbooks. The next fit factor I'd like to talk about is opportunity outside the classroom. We have over a thousand student groups on campus. We also have an honors program, which is a great choice for highly motivated students who thrive on challenge and actively seek out rigorous curriculum. We have a comprehensive learning abroad program so you can study, intern, volunteer, or conduct research overseas. We also have a number of living learning communities where students elect to live with other students who share an interest, lifestyle, or common identity. This is a great way to find your people on campus. I now wanna talk about location. We really won the lottery on this one. I don't need to tell you all, all the good that comes from living in the Twin Cities, though I will highlight the fact that Minnesota has 17 Fortune 500 companies 16 of which are headquartered in the Twin Cities. And these companies love U of M grads. They seek them out for internship, research, and employment opportunities before they even graduate. And when you do graduate, you're joining an alumni network of over half a million people, many of whom stay in Minnesota. But of course, this huge and impressive family of alumni has members all over the world who are eager to network with and hire fellow U of M grads. The last fit factor I'd like to discuss is value. We know college is an investment of mind, body, and checkbook. So it is a top priority for us to make college affordable for our students. 75% of our students receive some form of financial aid. 
We also offer two scholarships exclusively for Minnesota students, the You Promise and Promise Plus scholarships. These scholarships, as well as all financial aid, um, is awarded based on the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. We also offer merit-based scholarships. You are automatically considered for those when you apply. And speaking of applying, let's talk about it. To apply, we need three things from you, an application form, self-reported courses and grades, and an application fee or application fee waiver. There are two different applications or application forms you can use to apply, the common application or our own application called the Golden Gopher application. The self-reported courses and grades will be entered one of two ways, depending on how you apply. If you apply with the Common App, you'll need to complete the courses and grades section. If you apply with the Golden Gopher application, you'll be prompted to complete a self-reported academic record. To do this, you'll essentially copy what is written in your transcript into your application. The complete application with the three pieces is your application for three things. It's your application for admission, application for the honors program, and your application for merit-based scholarships. We have three application deadlines. We review applications the same way, no matter when they come into our office, so long as they arrive by January 1st. The only difference with the deadlines is that the sooner you apply, the sooner we owe you an admissions decision. There is one exception, however, and that is for students interested in the School of Nursing. For you, there is but one deadline, and that is November 1st. We evaluate applications using a holistic review process. This means what the name suggests. We review you holistically. There is no one line, number, or piece of your application that will be the deciding factor. We read everything in your application, and your application is read at least twice by real life human beings, myself included. And that's the University of Minnesota in the world's tiniest nutshell. If you want to learn more, we are offering in-person campus tours as well as virtual information sessions. Again, my name is Laura. Please feel free to reach out at any point of the process if you have questions, concerns, or would just like more information. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much, Laura. And just a reminder to all of our participants, you can ask questions using the Q&A function, and you can ask questions of any of our schools here at any time. So please go ahead and use that Q&A function if you'd like. Up next, we have the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Hi there, I'm Hannah from Milwaukee School of Engineering. Let me pull up my PowerPoint here. All right, so here at MS OE, I'll go back to the beginning here. Um, we are a four year graduation guarantee at MS OE. We are a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. We're roughly around 2,800 students, so we're a pretty small university when it comes to size, um, though we are located downtown Milwaukee, which kind of gives us the opportunity to be as big as you want or as small as you want, up to how you want to go about that. Um, with that, we're pretty specific to engineering majors, um, though we do have business and nursing also on our campus. So we have 15 majors with 13 minors. We have a graduation outcome of about 96%, and then that average starting salary, which is what a lot of our parents like to look at to know that your students or your children are gonna, after they graduated, they will get that um, career in where they will be making money afterwards. So here on campus, we are division three. So what that means basically is that we cannot offer athletic scholarship aid, but we do have uh, 20 plus NCAA division three varsity programs on campus, hockey being one of them. We also offer over a hundred different clubs and organizations throughout campus. Some are competitive, some are just for fun and some are just to meet some people. Here at MSOE, because we are so specialized and small with that uh, engineering degree, all right, programs here, uh, we're very hands-on. We take that portion of learning really seriously. We know engineers really don't like being talked at. They like to use their hands. They like to be doing the experiments in the lab works, which you can kind of see in some of these photos here. You're gonna be working on things um, because that small class size of that 13 to one faculty, student to faculty ratio, you're gonna get a lot of that one-on-one -on -one attention that um, many engineers look for um, just so they know what's going on in class and how they do. With that, all of our professors here on campus have five to seven years of uh, in-field experience before they come into the classroom. 
So they're taking their life experiences and they're going to bring them into the classroom for you. So you don't have to worry about what it is that you're looking forward to afterwards. With that also, um, we do not have any teacher's assistants or um, grad assistants here on campus. You're taught by your professor, your faculty member. We are in the middle of downtown Milwaukee, which if anyone follows the NBA playoffs, the Pfizer form, you can see it in this photo on the bottom middle there. It is about a two block walk off of our campus. So like I said earlier, you can make MSOE as big or as small as you want, it's up to you again. Uh, with that being said as well, there's always things going on on campus and outside of campus. One of the things we always like to mention to our students is that upon acceptance to MSOE, we are, every single one of our students gains a scholarship. So kind of going into the academic side of things, here's all of our academic majors here on campus. Many are that engineering, but we do also, like I said earlier, that nursing and business programs. With that, we also have those minors. Um, again, very hands-on university. Throughout your four years here at MSOE, you'll have roughly 600 hours with the labs. So anything you'll be doing in your field after you've graduated, you will get to do it on campus first. Along with that, um, the labs here, because we're so specialized, are very state-of-the-art. In our nursing program, we have that simulation hospital. Um, in all our other programs, you basically are in a life-like or career-like situation before leaving campus. And though we do not require internships throughout our career here, um, we do highly recommend all of our students to get them. And because we are a direct admit here at MSOE, which what that means is on acceptance, you are also admitted into your program. You have experience after that freshman year where you are many of our students will get internships directly after that freshman year. Um, very quick, very a lot of information. If you were to have any questions, please reach out. Here is our general MSOE um, explore page and websites. Applying today, we have started to do our admissions decisions here, um, which basically means we start handing those out mid-October. We are we are test blind this year. We are looking for a transcript in your highest form of calculus. Um, with that being said, there is no fee, and we also, it takes 10, 15 minutes, you can apply online, and you can also apply through Common App. Um, very, very, very quick explanation of MSOE, um, but we really, we also offer those on-campus visits as well right now. So if you had any questions, please reach out. But again, I'm Hannah, I'm an admissions counselor here at MSOE, and we look forward to talking with you. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Up next, we have Ridgewater College. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Devontae Stevens. I'm an outreach and admissions specialist here at Ridgewater College. Um, before we get started into our presentation, um, I would like to share a video here. If I'm able to share my screen. Devontae, I don't have any sound. Sorry about that. You say you can't hear any sound? Yeah, you may have to, when you share your screen, um, do the optimized computer sound. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Here we go. Let's try that again. What does it mean to be a Ridgewater warrior? Sometimes being a warrior means not knowing exactly what the next step is, but having a place to explore the unknown. Other times, being a warrior means taking the fast track towards your passion. Either way, you'll be welcome here. At Ridgewater College, you'll find a community of students from all walks of life, all interests and pursuits. And we prefer it that way. We're a community and technical college nestled in Minnesota Lake Country that believes in an affordable, hands-on approach to help you discover all of the opportunities the world has to offer. Our small class sizes, experienced instructors, transfer pathways, student life, and postgraduate placement rates are a few of the reasons we've been named Best Community College in Minnesota by Niche.com and ranked in the top 20 community colleges in the nation. Come visit us at either of our campuses in Wilmer or Hutchinson. We'd love to show you around.
All right, let me go ahead and get started here and share the screen. I said, thank you all for being here with us tonight. I said, my name is Devonte Stevens. I'm the Outreach and Admission Specialist here at Ridgewater College. Um, we have two campuses. Um, our main campus is um, Wilmer. I um, mean, that's about an hour and 45 from the Twin Cities area. And then um, we have Hutchison as well. Um, Hutchison is about an hour from the Twin Cities area. So not too far away from the Twin Cities for students who are looking to explore to get a little bit on the outskirts. We'll say we are a two-year community and technical college. Um, so that means, say, on our technical side, students come in and they gain um, a lot of skills that they can get employed and get out into the field after two years. On the liberal arts side, a lot of our students, they transfer on to four-year universities where we have a lot of different opportunities for students to, um, with pathway programs as well. So I'll dive in and talk about um, some of the programs that we do have to offer and try to squeeze a lot here within the next six minutes. Um, so first we'll start with our um, advanced manufacturing and engineering. Um, so we have an automation and robotics program, um, which is very, um, it's essentially a two-year mechanical engineering program um, with a 100% um, placement rate in that program, um, computer aid and drafting, which is actually the number two um, program um, for online drafting in the country. And we have a machine tool and technology program. So it's for individuals that's looking at getting into um, working as a machinist, Non-destructive testing is another very unique program that we're able to offer as we are one of five schools in the nation that offers an accredited non-destructive testing program. And what they do in that program is typically they just um, inspect a lot of structural things that can cause any damage to our environment. So they're looking for any imperfections. And basically, like I said, they're just um, tagging those things and reporting those issues, but they don't have to worry about fixing those issues. And we have welding and we have a large ag and vet tech program. So I said, we have the, the largest ag program out of all two-year schools in the state of Minnesota. So like I said, you can see that we have a variety of options for you um, here as well for ag. And then we have vet tech here as well. Uh, we have our automotive trades. So say we got our auto body when we focus all on the outside of the car and then auto mechanics where we focus on the inside and how um, the vehicle functions as well. Um, a lot of opportunities in our business and marketing field. As you can see, we have our accountant, administrative assistant, um, healthcare administrative assistant, legal assistant, um, marketing and design and marketing and sales. And we have multimedia design, uh, which is basically a, a two-year graphic design program. So as you can see right above our two um, bulletins aboard, above, we have the marketing and design. So some students may want marketing and graphic design. So we put those together and you can see right below that we have the same thing with our photography and design. So you get a little bit of everything in there. And then we do have professional photography here as well. Um, our top construction trade right now, so we have the electrician um, and potentially we'll be having plumbing coming up here this fall. Our electrician um, program is very unique as it, our program does count as 2,000 hours towards your journeyman's work um, worker test. Um, you need 4,000 hours, so you get half of that, not the other way, through our program as well. Uh, we have our cosmetology and massage therapy programs, esthetology and nail tech for anyone that has interest in that as well. Um, education. I say we have a lot of different pathway programs that can transfer into any state universities in the state of Minnesota. Or I say there are some students that go out of state, and those schools just have to look at look how, how they accept our own. Um, our courses as well through your transcripts. So we have our own early childhood education transfer pathway, the um, elementary education foundations and our special education transfer pathway. Uh, we also have tons of different opportunities in our healthcare field as well. So we have our own EMT, our activity director, um, our health information um, technician, medical assisting, medical coding, um, nursing. So we do offer the RN and the BSN through Ridgewater. So we do have um, consortium agreements with Moorhead State and Metro State. I say it takes students about two and a half years to get the RN in the last year and a half. They'd be able to complete their BSN as, as well as LPN, paramedic, and phlebotomy. And so I try to get through these pretty quick so we can get through some more information. Um, we have our IT programs, law enforcement, liberal arts and sciences, and occupational skills. So as we go through all that, we talk about other opportunities that students have to get involved. So we are a junior college, um, so we do not offer scholarships, um, but students have the opportunity to gain scholarships after playing sports here. So you can see we have our baseball, um, play target shooting, men's basketball, softball, 
volleyball, basketball, and the wrestling. And as we talk about all the things, you probably be wondering, okay, how much would this all cost me? Bridgewater, we are fairly affordable. Um, we had $197 per credit. So on average for a student taking about 16 credits per semester, um, 32 over the year, you're looking right at $6,307.20 for the entire year. So we are fairly affordable um, here at Ridgewater as well. And some of our accomplishments- Today We'll have to um, wrap it up if you wanna to go to your contact info slide. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you, I appreciate that. So like I said, here's the contact information. I say if you ever have any questions in regards to Ridgewater, I'll just feel free to take a quick screenshot or say we'll be able to ask some questions throughout the Q&A session as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Like Devante said, if you have more questions, feel free to use that Q&A function as we go along. Up next, we have Mayville State University. Just trying to share my screen. Can everybody see that? Everybody's good? Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alice Foster. I am an enrollment recruiter here at Mabel State. Um, I'm basically just going to go over our lookbook that we have for our university and go through it and break it down a little bit for you. So over here on this left side, at Mabel, we have about 1,200 kids. About half of those are actually on campus. So for being a four-year university, we're pretty small. Um, class ratio, 13 to one, about 12 per class, especially moving up into your higher level classes. Majority of our kids are from North Dakota, but if you add Minnesota in that as well, it's about 80%. So it's a very local Midwest school. Um, for well, being such a small- Can you reshare? It's not pulling up. It says it started, but I can't see your program. Okay. Um, I'm just going to stop it and then see if I could get that to go back. Um, sorry. You still can't see it? It says it started screen sharing, so it may pull up as you go if you want to keep, keep going. Okay. Like if I... Um, I'm just going to keep talking, even if it doesn't. I'll just give you information, and then if you have any further questions, I, I could shoot you an email about what it is. Um, we offer about 80 majors and minors, ranging from accounting all the way to sports management, coaching. At Mayville State, we're a big teaching school, uh, teaching and nursing, so those are our two most dominated programs, I would say. Uh, we also offer pre-professional programs. So dentistry, criminal justice, things like that as well. Here at Mayville, we have a lot of campus life clubs. Um, if you're an athlete on campus, technically that's a club as well. But I would say our main ones would be the science club, our multicultural club, and our DECA club as well. DECA is usually for business majors, so that's a good one to get into if that's what you're interested in either. Um, at Mabel State, we are an NAI school, and we offer the six main sports, I would say, volleyball, basketball, softball on the women's side, football, baseball, basketball on the men's side. Um, the only thing that's a little bit different about the NAI is that you have to sign up to play a sport, but we give you a code that you put into the NAI website, and it sends us your information right off the bat. Um, the next page, I know you guys probably can't see it, but it talks about cost. And here at Mayville for being four year, it's only about $13,000 a year. Um, that's breaking down with tuition, student fees, and room and board. So it's not too expensive of a college for it being a four year university. And then that's on top of getting academic scholarships as well. We do accept unofficial transcripts. We just have to make sure that your four main like courses are gonna be finished by your senior year. And um, we offer scholarships on top of that. They're located under the Mayville State University website. Very easy to fill out, won't take up too much of your time. Uh, my biggest piece of advice, even if you don't attend Mayville, is to 
apply for scholarships no matter what you're doing. Do one every weekend of your senior year if you can, junior year if you can. Just apply for scholarships. That's my biggest piece of advice. Um, freshman admission, like I said, we accept unofficial transcripts, just making sure you have your English, math, your laboratory science, and your social studies going to be finished with that. Uh, here at Mayville, it's a $35 application fee. Uh, not too bad. Some bigger universities, it's more expensive than that. You could also get a fee waiver for it as well. We don't necessarily accept ACT scores, but if you have them, then it'll bump you up higher on our list of giving out those academic scholarships. We do offer extended learning as well. If you're not willing to move to North Dakota to come here, then we offer online classes. They are just priced differently than in-seat classes, but you still get treated the same way through your professors and through the university in general. And we don't offer as many majors or minors through online, but still the core ones. And we also offer, um, we have a writing center. So you write a paper, you turn it in, and the English majors correct it for you, and they give you what you did wrong, and you fix it, and you turn it in. We have tutoring on campus that's free. We have IT services. We have a nurse on campus five days a week. And we also have a study abroad program with the University of Norway. So if you ever have thought about going overseas to go to school, it's a transferable thing. It won't mess up you getting your degree at all. It'll just be a good experience to try and learn about somewhere else too. Um, at Mavo, we also offer an esports team new this year, and there's scholarships for that as well. So if you're big into video games at all, then that's something that you could look forward to too. Um, I would say the last thing is just Mayville is a very personable school. It's a very small community as well. And the community loves the university. Professors are so kind and very one-on-one. -on -one. They'll know you by your name and not just being a face on campus. And for me being an alumni, that, that was really important to me as well. So if you have any questions or anything, just shoot me a question in the chat. And I will also put my information in the chat as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Up next, we have Valparaiso University. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let's get this screen share going. Perfect. Um, so my name is Brendan Navazny, and I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at Valparaiso University, located in Valparaiso, Indiana. We're about an hour southeast of Chicago and 20 minutes south of the Indiana Dunes National Park. And the Indiana Dunes National Park is the seventh most visited national park in the country. And you can hike, camp, snowshoe, and even go to the beach. So we're basically on Lake Michigan. Valpo is an independent Lutheran university with approximately 3,100 undergraduate students from most 50 states and 34 different countries. We are a diverse and inclusive community that welcomes students of all faiths, cultures, and identities to campus. Valparaiso University offers over 70 different majors within our five direct admit colleges, which include the College of Arts and Sciences, College of Business, College of Engineering, College of Nursing and Health Professions, and Christ College, which is our honors college. Christ College is the third oldest honors college in the country, and it offers students in every field of study an engaging alternative path to complete their general education requirements. There are plenty of academic options for our students to find and develop their passions on campus, all with the help of dedicated faculty who are the only ones teaching classes. So we don't have any TAs on, on campus teaching class. Class sizes average around 20 students and our student to faculty ratio is about 10 to one. Our top five most popular academic programs include nursing, engineering, education, meteorology, and our physician assistant program. But as I mentioned, we have over 70 majors, so you get to curate your academic journey on campus with what you are passionate about. If you are unsure on your major, which is okay, I changed my major four times in college, you will have academic and faculty support designed to help you, you discover those passions. Our faculty and staff go beyond academics to get to know you personally, which is a great characteristic of smaller schools like Valpo. Beyond faculty who may become your mentor, Valpo offers a strong support system for student success. 
Our Career Center run, runs approximately 80 different programs a semester, and with a placement rate above 90% for the past 28 consecutive years, the Career Center is focusing on preparing students for life after Valpo through mock interviews, resume writing workshops, etiquette dinners, job and internship fairs, and the ability to connect with our 60,000 plus global alumni network. We also offer math and science tutoring in the engineering-based HESI Center, our academic success center, plus the Writing Center and Language Resource Center. These are all free services, which allows academic excellence to be available for all students. The AARC or Access and Accommodation Center is available for all students looking for support in and outside of the classroom. Our Counseling Center provides a broad range of preventative, remedial, and developmental services for our student community. We also have a health, health center directly located on campus for primary care for a majority of injuries and illnesses. Over 400 Valpo students are Division I athletes, but we also have intramural and clubs, club sports. We also offer over 100 different student clubs and organizations, such as our University Programming Council, Dance Marathon, multicultural organizations, such as our Black Student Organization, Alliance, Study Abroad, Service Trips over our two-week spring break, faith life organizations, and participating in the fine arts, even if it's just extracurricular. Plus, 30% of Valpo student body is involved with Greek life. Our campus community has a big school feel with how much you can be involved with, but you won't get lost in the crowd. So, do you think Valpo might be someplace you could see yourself? You can apply through the Common App or our own, our own application on a rolling admission basis, and it's free of charge, so we don't have an application fee. I encourage students to apply by November 1st, which is our priority scholarship deadline, and is a great way to ensure you are maximizing your scholarship potential on campus. Valparaiso University is test optional for the 2022-2023 application year for all programs and majors, and our tuition will not increase for the 2022-2023 academic year. Based on your weighted high school cumulative GPA, you can see what academic merit scholarship you may qualify for listed on the right. In addition, the FAFSA, the FAFSA did open October 1st, and any student who completes the FAFSA with Valpo will receive a minimum of $1,000 regardless of your family income. So you get $1,000 just for filing. I also encourage you to come for a campus visit. We are open Monday through Friday for individual tours, and we offer a variety of virtual options as well. I also encourage you to follow us across the social media platforms. The Orange Z is ZMe and is a great way to connect with our Valpo student community. Winton Jones works with all students in Wisconsin and Minnesota, so I will put his contact information as well as mine in the chat box. So if you have any specific questions, you can reach out to either of us. We all love to share Valpo. We all love to share about Valpo and we can't wait to connect with you. And I thank you again for being with me today. Thank you so much, Valparaiso University. And just a reminder, you can use that Q&A function at any time to ask questions of our schools here tonight. Last but not least, we have Waldorf University. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Madison Steenerson. I am an admissions counselor here at Waldorf University, and I am in charge of the prospects that we have coming from Minnesota. So um, if you decide to apply here, um, you'll primarily be dealing with me. So what I have on the screen is the, um, is the Prezi that we use for open houses. So we'll just kind of skip around and go through all the main information. That's the most important that we can fit in the time. A little bit about us at a glance, we were founded in 1903. We, are, um, we do sit in a rural small town. It's about two hours south of the cities. Um, our enrollment on campus, we have about 600 students. And then on the flip side, we have about 3,000 students doing our online programs around um, the world. Our student to faculty ratio, we have about 11 to one and the average class size is about 15. So you do get to develop those personal relationships with your professors. We also don't have any TAs or GAs on campus. So um, any class, even your gen eds, you will be learning from somebody that is qualified to teach those subjects. Even though we are a small campus, we do have a lot of diversity. Um, we have about 35 states represented and then about 30 countries. So that's kind of nice um, being on a small campus. You do get to have those um, interactions with those international students. And then you also get to learn about those different countries too, as well. 
a little bit um, about our academics. Here is a list of the different majors that we have on campus. Probably um, our most popular majors are biology, um, our bachelor's of science. We do have our pre-professional programs through there. Then um, our business is also pretty popular, communications, specifically digital media and our graphic design. Our criminal justice, whether you do a double major with psychology or a major and a minor, a lot of students usually do that as well. Education is also popular. Um, since we are in a small town, we do have a good relationship with um, a lot of the surrounding towns. So more often than not, you from your freshman year on, you do get to have those in-classroom experiences and get to do clinical hours. Our health promotion and exercise science is also pretty popular for those that want to go into um, physical therapy tracks and that, and also sport management is also pretty, um, it's growing more. And let's see. Okay, so um, we are a small campus and we do have a lot of supports for our students. So we do offer um, free tutoring on campus. It's gonna be by students that have already taken those classes. So, and then that can be either available at any time we also have something called student success coaches. And those on top of having an academic advisor, you have a student success coach and they're kind of your resource person. You can reach out to them. They reach out to you a couple times this semester and just make sure that um, you're finding everything okay. Make sure that you're just doing okay as a person. With COVID, there's a lot of mental health concerns that are happening right now. So those student success coaches are really important for those students that need counseling services but don't need don't know how to get go about like signing up for that kind of stuff or even if you just need to find the business office and don't know where it's at they're also there for that as well let's see let's go to the admissions so um our automatic admissions criteria align pretty well with our um the naia eligibility requirements so it's a minimum gpa of 2.0 the ACT requirement is an 18 or the SAT equivalent, which is um, 970. We are waiving the ACT requirement for the upcoming year just because we do pull a lot of students from all over the country. And there are still some places that do, um, it's still hard to find testing centers. And then that's kind of that. Our application is free all year round. We never have any sort of yeah, cost with it. And then the process, there isn't very many deadlines through it. We do have some students that have already deposited for the upcoming year. So that's, you can just move through as you feel um, fit. So scholarship wise, um, since we are a smaller college, we do have to be pretty aggressive with our scholarship programs. So you can get a scholarship through their merit-based scholarships for your academics, and those are based on your GPA or your ACT. And then also um, each sport, the scholarships are assigned through their coaches. And then also um, some of the unique sports that we have now, we have an esports program that is growing very rapidly. He, they're very competitive this year. He's recruiting from all over the country. Um, they're playing Overwatch. I think they're getting into Rocket League. We also have a new shooting sports program. Um, they're shooting trap and skeet this upcoming year. And then we also do have other scholarship programs through our Pillars program, which is a career development program. She has her own application on the website that her scholarships range from half to full tuition. And then we also have um, performing arts scholarships through theater, choir, and music. And those, um, you can also audition there's different ways that you can do that virtually online as well. And then I think that is all I have. I think I've rambled fast enough to get through most of it. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, we appreciate it. And now we have some time um, for a question or two. So um, I will put that up on the screen here. And just a reminder to all of our participants, if you have any more questions, feel free to still use that Q&A function. Um, our schools will be able to answer those during these last few minutes. And then also um, they'll put their contact information in the chat if they haven't done so already. So our question for tonight is, 
what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? So again, I'll invite all of our schools back on screen and we'll go in the same order um, that we started in. So we'll start with the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. All right, what an excellent question. Um, I think maybe my one piece of advice for tonight's audience um, as you go through the college search process is as much as you can, I encourage you to keep your eyes on your own mat. Um, what I mean by that is try not to worry about what other people are doing and um, when they're doing them. Um, you know, the college search and application project is so project. It is a project as well as a process. Um, it's so intensely personal and subjective. Um, and so while it's hard not to kind of compare yourself to your peers, what they're doing right now, um, you know, I encourage you to lean into the fact that your journey is inherently unique um, and to lean into it and to embrace it as much as you can. Right. Milwaukee School of Engineering. Great question. I would also agree with um, what Laura previously said, and I would also say try to visit as many colleges as you possibly can. Um, every college, every campus has its own experience, um, and you definitely want to do it while there's kids or students on campus. It makes a difference. Um, but yeah, everyone has their own journey. Everybody gets their own experience. Some people know after one visit, some people know after 10, it totally depends on the student. Um, yeah, I also agree with um, everything that was said. Um, just kind of just piggyback and talk a little bit more about those college visits. On those visits, um, see if you can meet with some instructors, um, meet with some current students, or right? see if you can sit in at a classroom. Um, Cause I think when you talk about college visits, it's all about finding that fit. Um, Cause I think it's easy to go online and find a, a school that has your program, that has your price, perfect distance from home. Um, but you need to make sure that it fits, you know, like everything looks a little bit different than it does online. Um, so go ahead and meet with some of the people that you're gonna be dealing with for the next four or five years of your life. I would definitely say to go somewhere where you feel comfortable. Like when you know, you'll know, it might take you a long time. It might be the first one you visit, but definitely be open to different experiences, things you're not used to, and don't be afraid to try something new. Um, my two pieces of advice are, if you're hesitant about applying to a school, but they're a free application, still apply because it's free, so you don't know what will happen. And then if you're hesitant about a private institution because of the cost, um, don't cross it off your list because we do have a lot of financial aid and scholarship offerings that help us bring the price way down. So keep us on your list as well. And then one thing, uh... Obviously, campus visits are super important. And then um, another piggyback thing, kind of based on what um, Ridgewater had said too, try to go to campus visits when they're um, up and moving or when they're functioning, because sometimes just watching other students, the paths they take, just it's a lot easier to envision yourself being a student when there's other students on campus. And then also you can you could sit down at a table and talk with students if you wanted to. For the most part, they are pretty um, nice, I guess. That's great. Great advice, everyone. Thank you. I think you know the main overarching theme you're all talking about is to get a sense of that fit, that feel, and um, you know, don't discount schools. Take a look, talk to students, talk to those admissions counselors. That's what you're here for is to, to help everyone find that right fit and find what works for them. So thank you so much for all of your advice. Um, that is our time for today. So I just wanna say thank you to all of our schools for being here and thank you for joining us tonight. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide we encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions tonight. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. That's strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thank you and have a good evening.